this is Caleb Jones, and this is the Alpha Male 2.0 podcast. And uh, this podcast is a follow-up to a podcast I did several podcasts ago on dealing with divorce at an emotional level, going through a divorce. Um, I was divorced a bazillion years now. It was a long time ago now, something I never really think about. But I know a strong percentage of you have been divorced and or going through a divorce. And when I say divorce, that means you're ending a relationship with a woman you lived with. You don't necessarily have to be legally married to her to go through what I call a divorce. So if you have a live-in girlfriend for four years and you're moving out or she's moving out, that's the same thing emotionally and in many cases logistically as a divorce. And it was a popular podcast. I got a lot of feedback about it. I got a lot of emails about it. And in that podcast, I mentioned the rules in terms of dealing with an ex-wife or ex-girlfriend you lived with. I'll call that person, by the way, a wife to make it easier. I've said this many times. When you live full-time with a woman, she is your wife. If you live full-time with a woman you're having sex with in a romantic or dating context, that's your wife because you're living the lifestyle of a married man. You could say, but we're not legally married. I don't care. That's not how you view it and that's not how she views it. So I'm gonna call this person your wife even though you might not have been legally married. You probably didn't sign that particular piece of paper. But anyway, in that podcast, I, I casually mentioned the, the rule set for dealing with a wife and how to do that. And a lot of you said, oh my God, yes. Can you please talk about that? I wanna know about that. So this is something I wrote about in my blog many, many years ago. If you were interested in my blog, I have bazillions of articles on these topics. That's at alphamale20.com slash blog. And by the way, while we're talking, I have another podcast called the Sovereign CEO Podcast, where I talk about business, location dependent income, international lifestyle, five flags, living abroad, things like that. And you can subscribe to that podcast over at calebjones.com slash podcast. So this is the follow-up to that podcast on how to deal with the dreaded ex-wife. And again, I don't care if you're legally married. If you live with her and you don't, now she's your ex-wife. This is both with and without children. And the overall arc, before I get to the specific techniques, the specific rules, the overall concept here, and I'll talk more about this a little bit, is to not go to war. This is including and especially if you have kids and you're going through a custody battle. When you go through a custody battle, when you go to war against a woman who is an ex, you automatically lose. You both lose. It's like the USSR and the United States having a nuclear war. You both lose. There's no winner. You cannot win. I'm going to get her. No, you can't. Because even if you do get her, you will end up spending a mountain of money. And I have heard all the horror stories. I have talked to hundreds of men going through divorces, hundreds of men going through custody battles. I have heard the worst things I've ever heard in my life. Guys who've spent their life savings on paying attorneys to get their kids back or to spend some time with their kids. Guys who spend $60,000, $80,000, $130,000 paying goddamn attorneys to go to war against the goddamn ex-wife. My overall frame and my overall advice to you is to not go to war because you will lose. Not only is the entire legal system in most Western countries, but not all, completely arrayed on her side, but even if you do win, quote unquote, which you probably won't, you will still lose. The psychological damage from the years and years and years and years of fighting the ex-wife fighting the mother of your children, fighting your ex-girlfriend over the house or who gets what from the house or figuring out equity in the house or fighting over the kids, whatever the fuck it is, is never, ever, ever worth it. When I got divorced a billion years ago, I didn't do this. I didn't go to war and boy, I could have. She did some things where I could have hired an attorney and really gone after her ass and I would have spent mountains of money and fought for years and years. And even if I quote unquote won, I would have lost. I didn't do that. I wanted to get on with my happy alpha male 2.0 life. So I just kind of sucked it up and just let her do those things and moved on with my life. And that's what you should do. So I'm gonna cover some specifics about this in a minute, but that's my overall frame. Move on. I know guys who have been divorced more than five years and they're still furious at their ex-wife. They're still bitching about their ex-wife. In many cases, especially ones with kids, they're still emailing, sending angry emails and angry texts to their ex-wife and getting all pissed off. This is the exact opposite of Alpha Male 2.0. You can't get more opposite to that. Move on and let her go. 
I have not spoken to my ex-wife in well over 10 years, probably 15 years. And even then it's only been one time. It was a, I think I, we talked maybe, I don't know, 14 years ago. It was a very quick 20 minute phone call that we had to have regarding my daughter, who was a little girl at the time, regarding her medical insurance, something like that. That's it. And it's been wonderful. I don't fight. I'm happy. Long-term consistent masculine happiness. That's what we teach here at Alpha Male 2.0. You can't do that if you're going to war against the ex-wife or the ex-girlfriend. That is fucking stupid, especially considering you're not gonna win. All right, so let me give you a few steps. Step one, this is for you guys who have children. Okay, if you don't have children, you are exempt from this, thank God. But if you have kids, step one is to emotionally accept she will raise your children wrong. This is really hard for men to do because we love our kids. We're protective of our kids. We want to raise them right. That's a big thing with guys. We want to raise our children right. I, I completely relate to this myself. I have two kids myself. We want to raise them right. And then when they go over to see their mom, your ex-wife or ex-girlfriend or whatever it is, and the mom, you know, feeds them a bunch of Twinkies and hostess ding-dongs or says bad words in front of them or smokes cigarettes in front of them, your head fucking explodes and you call her, God damn it, don't feed those kids, blah, 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 and screaming and yelling in war. What you're going to have to do, and this is hard, but you're going to have to do this, is to emotionally accept in the core of your being, your spirit and your heart, my kids are going to spend X amount of time, X number of days per week or X number of weeks per month with their mother who is going to do everything wrong. And I'm okay with that. I just got to accept it. What are you going to do to fix this problem? Do your best to think rationally and objectively. Are you going to go over to her house and bang, because guys really do this, bang on her door and she opens it and you're going to scream at her and tell her that you better feed those kids correctly and don't let them eat all that goddamn candy and chocolate or make sure they're wearing this jacket, not that jacket. I've seen guys do this. Why the hell are they wearing this jacket? They're supposed to wear that jacket. Are you going to scream at her and tell her to do things and she'll say, oh, yes, master. Thanks for your advice. I'm so pleased to hear your feedback. No, she's going to say, fuck you, motherfucker. And now you're arguing. You're going to get into a screaming match. There'll be no resolution and you'll walk away angry and she'll walk away angry. You will have accomplished nothing because you're a fucking moron. Don't do that. You've got to suck it up and be a man and accept that she's going to raise your kids wrong. And that's the way it goes. Now, let me give you the exceptions because I know I'm gonna get these in the comments. If she's physically assaulting the children, physically, not emotionally, because that can mean all kinds of dumb things, or she is using hard drugs in front of the children, not cigarettes, that's not hard drugs. Not even weed, that's not hard drugs. You know what hard drugs means. If she's shooting up heroin needles in front of the kids, then obviously you need to take action, but you take legal action through the system, you don't go over to her house or call her up and lecture her about don't hit my kids and don't do heroin in front of my kids. Get your attorneys and get the police involved because that shit's illegal. Matter of fact, it's very illegal in today's hypersensitive left-wing Western culture where we're all terrified about the children. So those are the only two exceptions on everything else. If she yells at the kids, if she bad mouths you in front of the kids, which she probably will do, if she doesn't feed the children the way you would feed them, if she uses bad words around the children, if she lets them watch inappropriate rated R movies, whatever fucking excuse you can think of, you just accept that that's gonna happen and you move on. And when I say move on, this is what I did in my divorce, you become the good example. So when they spend time with you, you're not gonna do any of those things. You're gonna eat healthy. You're not gonna smoke cigarettes in front of your kids. You're gonna talk positive and upbeat and happy. You're gonna smile and have a great time when you're with your children. If you spend time with a special woman, your children are gonna see her with you and make sure she's an OLTR, please. No FEs or MLTRs around your kids. But if you have an OLTR, the kids are gonna see you with her laughing and smiling and having a great time and enjoying each other. You're gonna be the positive example. Your ex-wife will be the negative example. This is exactly what I did during my divorce. And believe me, my kids saw a very stark difference in my attitude and my life when they spent time with me versus when they spent time with their mother. And they told me all about it. It's like night and day. So be the positive example instead of fighting your ex-wife to be something that she will never be. Yes, she may scream at your kids inappropriately. Yes, she may not help them with their homework. That's the way it goes. Suck it up, accept it, outcome independence, 
and be the example. Don't fight her on this. That's just stupid. It's the dumbest thing I see men do. Rule number two when dealing with the ex-wife, and again, ex-wife could mean you weren't legally married to her. Do not argue with the ex-wife. One of the beauties of being divorced is that you don't have to put up with the ex-wife's bullshit anymore. You don't have to listen to her anymore. You don't have to argue with her anymore. That's the beauty of getting divorced. When I got divorced, I was so happy because I didn't have to put up with her shit anymore. I said, thank God, I never need to listen to this woman ever again. And I didn't, it was wonderful. When you argue with the ex-wife, when you go out of your way to call her up and argue with her on the phone or argue with her over email or over text, because I've seen men do all three of these things, you destroy that one wonderful gift that the Lord gives you when you divorce your wife or live an ex-girlfriend. Don't argue with her because once again, you're gonna waste your time. She is not gonna come see your point. She is not gonna say, oh, thank you. You make a very good point, ex-husband who I hate. No, you're just blowing a whole bunch of emotional energy out the window for no reason because you just have no emotional control. And a core aspect of Alpha Male 2.0 is what? Emotional control. I wrote an entire section on that in my primary book, The Unchained Man at alphamalebook.com. You've got to learn to accept, be outcome independent, and let her be a bitch. Let her disagree with you. Let her badmouth you. Don't argue with her. Once again, this is about acceptance. You need to accept that she's likely going to badmouth you to everyone you both know, to your kids, to your family, to her, certainly to her family. You need to accept that she's probably going to blame the entire divorce on you even though it was not your fault, or even though it maybe was 50% your fault. She's gonna blame the entire thing on you, accept it. You're gonna to have to accept, if you both have children together, that she's gonna to attempt to use the children as weapons against you. You're just gonna to have to accept this. Here's something else you have to accept. You're gonna to have to accept that pretty much 100% across the board, everyone on her side of the family is gonna completely 100% side with her. Even if they logically know that she was the psycho bitch who caused all the problems in the marriage, even if they logically know this, they're still going to take her side. And you need to assume that everyone on her side of the family is gonna take her side, and that's the problem with divorces, what happens. The wife's family takes the wife's side, and the husband's family automatically takes the husband's side, no matter whose fault it is, even if it's very obviously 100% the husband's fault or 100% the wife's fault. You need to accept it. You also have to accept that the family court system is gonna be largely on her side. And she will know this. And because of all these factors, there is literally no reason for her to listen to you. She knows that you can just scream your little head off and she go, yeah, whatever, and call you an asshole and hang up the phone or what have you, or scream back at you, and she doesn't have to listen to a goddamn word you say. She will never agree with you. That's why it's so stupid to attempt to argue with your ex-wife. Again, move on. I'll say this again, I have not spoken to my ex-wife in well over a decade. I barely talked to her after the divorce because I knew I would just be wasting my time. Rule number three in dealing with the ex-wife is you may need to completely cut off all contact. You might need to do this. Now, if it's very amicable, you may not need to do this, okay? But if it's not, and usually it isn't, especially if there are kids involved and or especially if you both went in a house together. Oh my God, men are so stupid when they do this. When you both bought the house together, now you're fighting over who gets the house and who will move out and how will you sell it? And why are men so stupid? Anyway, when you're going through these things and there's just nothing but drama and bile coming out of her mouth or on her texts or on her email, you may just have to cut it off. Cut your losses and get the fuck out of there. So here's what happened in my scenario. Right after I physically separated from my first wife, for a brief period of time, I would still go over the house to pick up my daughter and I would still talk to my ex-wife. And that happened for maybe a week or two or three. And then she started screaming and yelling and bitching and moaning. And one day she actually keyed my car, true story, as I was driving away because I wasn't listening to her shit anymore because again, I'm divorced this woman. I don't have to listen to her shit. So she keyed my car. I said, okay, I'm never gonna talk to this person in person ever again. I'm just gonna use the phone. If I need to talk to her, I'll use the telephone and that's it. And for maybe a few weeks, we would talk on the phone and she would scream and yell and bitch and threaten and what have you. I said, okay, we're not using the phone anymore. We're just gonna use texts. Now, I remember going through this process, even though it was like 15 years ago. We're just gonna communicate over texts. Okay, that's it, that's it. Communicate over text and then she would scream and yell and give me drama and bile. I said, okay, that's it, I'm not gonna talk to her anymore. And from that point forward, I never spoke to her ever again 
minus that one phone call many, many years ago. And when I absolutely had to communicate, we communicated through my mom who was kind enough to mitigate some of us when we had to communicate, which wasn't very often. You may have to do this. You may need to just suck it up and get the balls to just not communicate with her anymore. And let me reiterate, I did this while I had two small children. Actually, one of them wasn't small. My, my son was in high school at the time. My daughter was about eight years old. So just because you have little kids is not an excuse. Well, I have to communicate with her. I have kids. I had kids. I didn't communicate with her. I found a way around it. I found a way to communicate directly with my daughter. And I found a way to communicate with a mediary, in this case, my mom, who my mom was still on reasonably good terms with my ex-wife at that point, And we made that work. Find a way to make it work and don't use your goddamn kids as an excuse because it's just an excuse. In some extreme scenarios, you may need to just cut off all contact. And if you don't do that, it's on you. If you refuse to do this with an ex-wife or ex-girlfriend who is just nonstop drama in your life, you know whose fault that is? It's 100% your fault. Every piece of drama you have from that point forward is your fault because you don't have the balls to just cut it off and move on with your life. Number four rule, this is the final rule, I already mentioned this earlier, is be the positive example for your children. In my book, The Unchained Man at alphamalebook.com, I have two entire chapters on raising kids because it's just an important component of your life. And I said in that book, and I'll double down on this now, your job as a father is two things. Number one, you need to demonstrate unconditional love. Your kids have to know that you love them no matter what, no matter what decisions they make in their life. This is a very outcome independent way of being a father. You are not an angry alpha male 1.0 and you say, you better be a dentist or you better be a lawyer, God damn it. You better do what I do for a living and you better vote for Republicans like me or I don't like you anymore. Can't do that. You love them no matter what. And number two, your number two objective is to teach them cause and effect. When they do bad things, bad things happen. When they do good things, good things happen. And your job is to instill those two things into them and be the positive example at all times when they spend time with you, regardless of what their mother is doing when you spend time with them. That means you're positive and happy when you spend time with them. That means they see you doing positive things, like they see you working out, they see you paying attention to your diet, they see you working hard. That actually is good. As long as you're spending time with them and giving them their time, your kids see you on your computer working. When my daughter would come over to my house for weekends, and my son too, and he did it, I would give them dad time, and I'd give them plenty of it. We've spent time together, a lot of quality time. And then I would say, okay, at eight o'clock or at noon or whatever, daddy has to work, it's work time, daddy has to build his company and work on his business. And I would go to my office and I would work and I would make sure that they saw me work because I wanted to demonstrate a work ethic. I wanted to be the positive example. I mentioned this also early in the podcast. If they see you with a woman and it should be one woman, you don't wanna show your kids a parade of FBs and MLTRs. Please don't do that. That is not good at all. Keep that part of your life away from your children, okay? Unless your children are already like 17, 18, 19 years old, that by that point doesn't really matter, but you get my point. But if you have a serious woman in your life, OLTR, somebody very close to that. If she's involved and she's around the kids, she needs to be 100% positive at all times. And you need to be 100% positive at all times with her. No arguing with her. If she starts arguing or being negative around the kids, she's out of your life like that. All in the overall, be the positive example for your kids that their mother isn't. And trust me on this. I went through this myself. I have a lot of personal experience with this. Your kids will notice and it will make a difference. Trust me, kids are not stupid. Kids are very smart. Kids very quickly pick up who is the happy parent and who is the unhappy parent. Who is the parent who is going somewhere with his or her life, his life, and who is the parent who is not going somewhere with her life. Kids know this, be the example, be a good dad. And that means being positive when they're with you. That doesn't mean that you're screaming on the phone to your coworkers or you're screaming on the phone to your ex-wife and your kids see it. No, or having arguments with women, none of that negativity in front of your kids, ever at all. Do that stuff, if you need to do that stuff, great. Do that stuff when your kids aren't around, when they're back with their mom, then be as negative as you want. And again, I'm exaggerating, even though you should watch out. You get my point. As usual, if you want more podcasts on this topic, I know a lot of you guys are going through this right now or have recently gone through this or may need to go through this soon, depending on where you are in the process. I'm more than happy to do more podcasts on this because this is an important topic. I'm gonna end with this. If you are not living with a woman, if you're not married, I want you to realize the pain and suffering that men who move in with women go through when they end these relationships, particularly when these relationships are legal marriages, stupid, and particularly when these relationships are monogamous, 
double stupid. So if you're a younger guy, single guy, or don't live with a woman right now, pay attention to your older brothers who are going through all the pain and suffering of breakups and divorces, and don't do what they do, which is, in most cases, get legally married in some respect, and or almost always commit to sexual exclusivity. Don't do these things because you don't want to be in the statistic of men who have gone through a horrible divorce. Cool? Cool. I'll see you in the next podcast.